Hey, first off, I just want to, um, Eric Chenander is a defense coordinator at Nebraska's dad passed away. He's a longtime high school coach in the state of Iowa. Eric was on my staff at Oregon and uh, I was fortunate enough to coach with him in Philly and just uh, we lost a great man. The coaching community did and our thoughts and prayers from our entire program go out to Eric and his family and everybody at Nebraska and his dad Gene was a hell of a man and we lost, we lost a really good guy. So. Did you reach out to the Nebraska program? I talked to Eric, so, you know, he's a really good friend of mine, and it was uh, tragic. It was a car accident, so it was something sudden. So, um, But in Eric fashion, in the Chenander fashion, he actually still coached in the game on Saturday. Um, and now there's a service uh, today and a funeral tomorrow that I won't, we won't be able to attend. There's a bunch of our guys that know Chins really well. Myself and Coach Az both worked with them, and Don Pelham worked with them. So our thoughts and prayers are with the Chenander family. Question? What did you see on the film from Saturday's game? Um, I thought our defense did a really good job. You know, they, they held them to under 300 yards of offense. Uh, they tackled really well. They created um, two turnovers, you know, in, in critical ones start the game. You know, it was, it was a big one to, you know, kind of set the tone early. And then, the, you know, what we did in the fourth quarter. You know, the first play of the fourth quarter, Blay had a tackle for loss of minus four, forced him to punt. Uh, we had a 13-play drive that went 90 yards, and we scored. Our defense went back out on the field, created a turnover, and our offense went back out on the field with four minutes and 50 seconds, and they had three timeouts and ran the ball every down uh, and ran the clock out. So, you know, I thought it was a really good team victory, um, and we had contributions from everybody in all phases. So. Will we see Kyle Phillips at practice today? You will. Is he available? He's available. Okay. Um, now that you've seen, now that you've reviewed the film, I know last week we were talking about Washington's run defense mm -hmm. and how statistically they weren't good, although you pointed out several of their good players. Uh. But you guys pretty much rolled them pretty hard with the run game. They were uh. giving up 180 per game. You guys got 260. Uh. Um, what was what was the success in the I thought, game? you know, the fact when you have a quarterback that you have to defend um, is a difficult thing in college football. I think Dorian ended up with 87. You know, Zach ended up with 130, and then you have Britt. So, um, you know, it's it's a tough deal to, to deal with because um, the ball can go either way, you know. And, and a lot of times some of those rushing yards are maybe a design pass play call where people are in coverage. So it's actually not the rush defense, but it's the ability to contain the quarterback. And Dorian's done a really good job um, of understanding where those receivers are. Um, and if the first, second, and third option are covered, um, it may be a chance to, to get out and use his legs. So, um you know, it was a, just a, a really good effort on, by our entire group uh, rushing the football on Saturday. How do you it, think Dorian um, improve in terms of deciding when to run, how to run, maybe when to slide? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job of that. You watched him, you know, we always preach to our quarterbacks, touchdown, first down, get down. Um, you know, you, you don't want him to take a hit on every play. You know, the, one, it's part of the one of the abilities everybody talks about for a quarterback is availability, and you don't want him to take some of those shots. So, um, you know, he went down in the – in the Stanford game, and then he's such a tough kid, came back and played in that game, you know, and um, hasn't been 100%. He's probably back to close to normal in this game, and you kind of saw it, but I think he's really making really good decisions right now. You know, we've got two interceptions on the season. Uh, one of them was at the end of the half, uh, and the other one was a, a, a busted coverage in the LSU game where the defensive back wasn't where he was supposed to be, his man coverage, and he got caught on the wrong side. Um, so I thought he's done a really good job making decisions this year and really happy with how he's, how he's run our football team. What can you say about the guys up front? I mean, this is the fourth game where you've held an opponent to under 100 yards rushing. You know, mm -hmm. you know, what can you say about the pressure yeah. that the guys are doing individually? I think our D-line is, is doing a really nice job, you know, and, and uh, I think a guy like Odua, Odua probably played his best game for us and, and uh, was recognized as one of our players of the game on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Otito has been solid all year long, you know, in there. Um, but then the other guys, we're rotating a ton of guys through there. You know, Jay Toy is playing a lot. Tyler Manoa is starting to get some run. Daytona Jackson has played really well for us. Bo Calvert has played really well in the transition to outside linebacker, has done a really nice job. And I think our, our inside linebacker play has, has really upped in, you know, in, in, in what Caleb can do and what Jordan has added to our depth, what um, Cahill has added to our depth, and, and Kane and, and, and John John in there. So we have more depth than we've ever had of inside linebacker. So I think that front seven is doing a really nice job. Is there any, uh, is uh, Mitchell Agude available? Yep. Is Paul Grant available today? Yep. Uh, it's only a mafia play. If you want to go through the whole lineup, we can just go available, <laughs> unavailable. I, I, I'm just enamored by what the – what Mo the Mo Osling. Mo Osling's available. I, I was just leading into – because Tony Amafi played a lot of left guard in the fourth quarter. Uh, was, was that – No, they just uh, rotate. So they, they, just they rotate. put – uh, Paul played more snaps than Neil. Uh, but okay. we always rotate Neil in, so we feel like we've got multiple starters in the offensive line. So we don't – I don't look up and say, hey, this guy's in, why is that guy in? We're just rotating people, so – 
Have you had a chance to watch any of uh, the film from Oregon's game on Friday night? Yeah, we've watched every game Oregon's played, and we watched last year's game of Oregon's. We've watched every game this season, and then, you know, our, our game last year. And if there's any correlating games from a breakdown standpoint, formationally, um, both both ways that we'll look at. So we've we've watched every game by one by the time we get out on Monday. So. I was specifically referring to Friday night because Kayvon Thibodeau had to sit out the first half, but then you saw what he did in the second half. What, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on him? He's a very good player. You know, we got to be aware of where he is. They use him and they put him. They move him to multiple places. Um, and like anybody, you have to make sure you know where he is on every play. It's been a long road of injury with Martin Andrews. How, do you, how have you seen him kind of progressing? At least yeah, Martin's still working really hard. Um, he's available. He'll be. He'll be. Uh, you know, they're they're doing more with him now. Um, he's doing more with him now. I know he's excited. Um, and we'll see how he progresses out here in the training sessions. Have you talked to the team at all about having college game day on campus and kind of the... Not yet. We meet on Mondays. We're, we're real specific in what we do, so we talk immediately about the game we just played. Um, then we break and go watch that, and then we talk immediately about the scouting report. So um, the game day part doesn't happen until Saturday, so we'll, we'll touch base on that this week. But um, our mornings are pretty structured in terms of what we're doing, and so it's really about putting the last game to bed. And you know, we talk about the preparation phase, the competition phase, and the learning phase. So we do the learning phase when we come in the first thing on on uh, Monday mornings, um, and then we start on scouting report for our next opponent, both offensively, defensively, and special teams wise. So there wasn't enough time to get any of that other stuff in, and there will be as, as the week goes along. But that that won't occur till Saturday. So you know, Monday. Um, we'll concentrate on what we got to get done on Monday. How big of an opportunity do you think that is for the campus to have? That I think it's cool. I think it's great for our fans. I think it's great for our student body. You know, especially after last year um, when nobody could go to games. You know, and the fact that now we get to come back, everybody gets to attend. Um, you know, we've had some some unbelievable settings there. You know, the, the win over LSU and and the crowd that we have there was you know was memorable when you start to think about it. Um, it's an early kick, you know, so I think we're going to get a lot of people there. You get a lot of kids there. Um, I think it should be fun. So I think it's a great opportunity for our fans and a great opportunity for our students. You lost your last two home games. What would you say to fans who, who maybe you want to put on a, a, a bit of a better show for? We them? just don't talk about it. We talk about the next game. So I think we're 5-2 and two and we've got a really good football team. You should come out and see us play. With your experience up at Oregon when you were coaching up there and then correlating it to you saw the game Friday night, how weird was it that the crowd was booing their own offense on I, Friday? I didn't know that they were. So oh, and they were booing Anthony. Brown yeah, I watched. Hard I watched. There. We watched the game tape, so I don't watch okay. the, the TV copy, so I couldn't tell you what the you know. And really, when we're playing in games, I, I it's like a game tape to me, so I'm always unaware of the crowd, so I would I couldn't tell you what went on or or, or I, I don't have a comment on that. I didn't even know that it occurred. So, what are your early thoughts on on the quarterback and in the offense? Yeah, he's oh, for Oregon. Yeah, uh, they do a great job with him. Um, he's a he's a kid that can beat you both running and throwing. You know, they had a critical fourth down in the uh, Fresno State game. They called speed option, so they have confidence in him. And he converted and made a big play for him in that game to win the game for him. So, um, I think they got great confidence in him. I think Joe does a really good job in putting him in plays. It's a it's an RPO based offense. You know, everything they do is try to put your defense in conflict. Um, they probably throw more RPOs or run more RPOs than anybody in the country. That's kind of what their their MO is. They're trying to trick you and fool you, and we got to be really disciplined with our eyes. And um, you know, our, our defense has to be really disciplined this week. What's your experience facing Joe Moorhead? Like-